So that word jealous is not a positive word. And it's not that God is jealous. It's just a language issue. That word jealous is a language issue. That word jealous was used by Moses. Alright? And then let's look at where he used it again. Exodus 34, 14. For thou shalt worship no other God for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Deuteronomy 6, 15. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Now, that word jealous here has to do with someone who is affectionate. Affectionate over his own. Or zealous towards what he owns. Someone who is affectionate towards his own or zealous over what he owns. So when he called him a jealous God, see what he says afterward. To be able to understand why the word jealous was used by the translators. Again, remember, language is progressive. Okay, So the translators, the only word they could find at that time was the word jealous. And we shall do a little word study in a few minutes. Exodus 25. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. The word jealous is the word paquad in the Hebrew. P-A-Q-A-D. And it was never used for imputing sin or punishing people. It's a Hebrew word for jealous. Let's see where the word paquad was used. In Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah. As he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah. As he has spoken. So when God said. I will visit your iniquity to the third and fourth generation. The word visit is the word paquad, which means just like he visited Sarah and the result was laughter. So to visit means to take care of or to show affection. I'm teaching here. To show affection or to take care of is the meaning of the word visit. Because when that same word paquad was used in another context in Genesis, it was the word visit. All right? Genesis 39 verse 4. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him and he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. Next verse. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. That same scripture uses the same word, Pakwad. Look at Genesis 40 verse 4. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them and they continued a season in war. When he charged Joseph, the charge there was for Joseph to take care. To take care of them. Backward. Look at another usage of it. Genesis 50, 24. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die. And God will surely visit or take care of you. And bring you out of this land. Unto the land which he saw to Abraham. To Isaac and to Jacob. He will surely take care of you. So up until this point. God visit does not mean punishment. Exodus 3 16. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and they say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And if you follow through the thought, that's where he delivered them. That's where he delivered them. That's where he took care of them. That's where he visited them. Another scripture. To help us exodus 13 19 the b part god will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you this was joseph's prophecy to his children that a day will come 
even though I have died in this land, when you will leave this land, God will visit you and you will live. But when you are living, carry my bones. When God will take care of you, take care of me. Even though I won't be here physically, make sure you take care of me. Carry my bones with you. So the word visitation does not mean punishment. It does not mean to impute sin. The word visitation means to take care of. So the word visit is exclusive to Moses. Meaning to take care of. So let's go back to Exodus 25 again. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am an affectionate God, taking care of the iniquity of the fathers, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So when the fathers have misbehaved, I will take care of that misbehavior by protecting their children from their iniquity. I will take care i will look after your children even though you hate me you did me bad i will protect your children from your evil by taking care it's not a scripture for breaking causes it's a scripture for celebrating christ it's a scripture for celebrating the kindness and the goodness of god once you understand that even if you are thinking that there was a cause right now you're free you're totally free i will take care thank you lord god is not vengeful he's merciful he's a redeemer he wants to save he wants to bless the only involvement of god in any situation is salvation salvation redemption numbers 14 18 the lord is long suffering and of great mercy forgiving iniquity and transgression and by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers or taking care of the iniquities of the fathers unto the children unto the third and fourth generation the people that god said that because of their transgression they will die in the wilderness okay if it was a negative one why did their children enter the promised land the first generation of those idol worshippers who died in the wilderness how many of you remember everybody that came out of egypt didn't enter the promised land a lot of them died on the road so if for their idolatry god really was using their idolatry to punish their children then the children up to fourth generation then the children shouldn't have entered the promised land but it's not even the third generation that entered it's the first generation that means there was no cause they entered how many of you realize that even when israel misbehaved god was still good then they now rebel against god then they say oh we are thirsty water from the rock that is not a vengeful god ever hearing the sound of my voice and somebody has deceived you or somebody has told you the reason why you cannot get married is because of something your father buried in the village the reason why you cannot make progress is because there's a shrine somewhere where they offered 15 goats and 10 human heads and they have teamed up that you will not progress no all things are passed away behold all things are new if you stand up and shout that amen you will swim in grace you will swim in the blessing you will enjoy the comfort of the holy ghost somebody shout i receive revelation somebody say i increase in the knowledge of god that is one area where your mind has to be corrected god doesn't carry out vengeance on people he loves people is his goodness that leads to repentance so let your mind be full of thoughts of the goodness of god throughout the year i don't know what somebody has told you about your village and i told you about what used to happen in your family i stand here by the apostolic grace of god and by the revelation of god's word this morning i declare no past has any hold on your future no past has any relevance to your destiny no past has any relevance to who you are you're a brand new man 
you are superior to the devil you are superior to incantations you are superior to shrines you are superior to satanic installations if your amen is louder manifest victory manifest victory manifest victory anywhere you turn favor will be working somebody shout i expect favor i expect goodness i expect the sufficiency of grace now turn to your neighbor say you will succeed more than ever i didn't hear your amen have you ever seen light running from darkness who are you so if you walk into a place and there are shrines inside the moment you enter there your entrance is the neutralization of the shrine any charm they throw on you becomes favor somebody say i know god i know better than that i am blessed beyond the cause let me close with this in numbers they told balaam cause israel what was the answer this was even before jesus died this was even before jesus died they said balaam cause israel balaam said how can i cause a man whom god has blessed are you blessed now shout no more cause before jesus died balaam said how how when balak took him up and they concocted all manner of things then on the mountain the first mountain when balaam stood on it and balak said oh yeah curse them he was seeing israel in the valley he was on the mountain as he turned and wanted to curse israel as he opened his mouth he just said i bless you i bless you there's something you carry even if people are resisted when you appear there you will be accepted amen. somebody is not shouting that amen. amen the work of your hands are blessed amen. open your two hands this year your hands will be engaged in industry amen. i'm not hearing that amen at all amen. every member of this church listen carefully three things we will do majorly this year as a church please keep your hands open number one you will grow in knowledge i didn't hear that amen i didn't hear that amen you will grow in the knowledge of christ you will grow in the knowledge of god number two you will make money i'm not hearing that amen at all number two kelly patola you will make money get ready to register companies get ready to solve societal problems somebody shout i will solve problems in this society i will make money then number three we will evangelize what are the three things we'll do this year as a church number one number two number three you will know what to do you will find what to do when you look you will see opportunities somebody's not shouting amen welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back oh my goodness